Welcome to the latest MS Here from the Experts webinar. This series is helping people better understand multiple sclerosis, highlights MS-related resources, plus provides tools and tips to navigate their MS journey with more knowledge and confidence. Our intention is to help you learn more about this disease, treatments, research, wellness strategies, our programs, and much more. I am Sue Whitaker. I was diagnosed with MS in 1996, and a year later, my association with MS Canada came through the MS bike event, and I've been riding every year ever since. Um, I've been a volunteer with the MS Society from that point in time, and I'm currently an MS ambas ambassador here in British Columbia, and I'm your moderator for today's broadcast. We'd like to take this opportunity to share that as of January 1st, there has been a name change and the society is now called MS Canada. Under this new name, we will continue to fulfill the mission of the MS Society of Canada and the MS Scientific Research Foundation, building upon our 75 year history of supporting the MS community and funding the most promising research to identify the cause and cure of MS, plus the development of new treatments. It is a new name, but we have the same vision of a world free of MS. Before we get started with our presentations, let's briefly go over a couple of housekeeping items. Your microphones have been muted and will remain muted for the entirety of the broadcast. If you have a question, please type it into the chat box and we will try to get to as many questions as possible following the formal presentation. Please note that questions pertaining to specific personal situations likely cannot be answered in this type of venue and we recommend contacting your personal MS healthcare team or perhaps contacting the MS Knowledge Network for those questions. The session is being recorded and will be available soon on our website in English. We are also adding French subtitles to the recording, but that version won't be available for several weeks. The recordings will be available on our website under National Webinars from the Archived page and on our YouTube channel. A Facebook Live recording will be available also. Also, please note, that the MS Society of Canada or MS Canada does not approve, endorse, or recommend any specific product, therapy, or service, but provides information to assist individuals in making their own health and wellness decisions. Today's broadcast is an opportunity to learn more about enhancing your wellness by working with a your pharmacist. Our expert today is Heidi Whitkey. She um, is a pharmacist with diverse experience in both the retail and long-term care industry, focused on delivering clinical programs that help drive patient safety and overall health outcomes. She's worked in various clinical settings, managing chronic disease and polypharmacy, while collaborating, collaborating with patients to improve management of their overall health and well-being. Heidi is currently working as Director, Specialty and Virtual Services at Rexall, enhancing both patient access to virtual services and specialty medications in the community setting. Heidi graduated from the University of Toronto's Faculty of Pharmacy and is currently a member of the Ontario Pharmacist Association's Pharmacy Practice Committee. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you so much, Sue, for that introduction. Really excited to be here. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Really excited to you know speak to all of you. Really about what's passionate to, to myself, and you know, and really excited about the role that pharmacy and the pharmacists have really played over the last number of years. And uh, really, this is an opportunity to share with each of you how you can really tap into your pharmacist, um, and really they can really help to support your overall health and wellness journey. And when I reflect back, I've been practicing for. You know, over 15 years now, and it's really amazing to me to see the shift in the responsibilities and roles that pharmacists have taken on, and just that heightened awareness about the role that your community pharmacist plays, even within the healthcare system. So many of you today may have, you know, those really strong working relationships and patient relationships uh, with your local pharmacist, and many of them may have known you uh, for a number of years, and really are intimately sort of involved in both the caregiving side of it, um, you as a patient, but also supporting the broader family. And when I think back about, 
you know, uh, the number of, of years and the, the changes that has happened over um, this profession. It's really exciting to see, you know, we continue to be the most accessible healthcare professional in Canada. Um, and they are equipped with the knowledge and the skills to be able to support patients with their healthcare needs. And really not just, and again, in that context of filling prescriptions. And we'll kind of go into how that scope of pharmacy has really changed and how really it's meant to help to support the gaps that we've seen in the healthcare system and really help our patients and our customers along their journey and really ensure that we're meeting your health outcomes. So it's not just so much about, um, you know, interacting when you're sick, but really looking at interacting with the pharmacist, even at the early stages of life. Um, and whether it's, you know, as a prescriber, and we'll get into, again, certain jurisdictions within Canada, pharmacists can now prescribe or maybe it's as an immunizer um, where you've had your COVID vaccine from your local pharmacist or that first point of contact uh, for the healthcare system. So you have a question about a new diagnosis or a new therapy. Oftentimes, you know, the pharmacists are there and they're easily accessible and seen as that valuable healthcare resource. Um, so we are, there's a number of, of different areas that pharmacists uh, currently work in. And it's really interesting because right now, patients actually see their pharmacist about 1.5 to 10 times more often than they see their primary care physician. So really think about all those different aspects and uh, opportunities to have touch points and really help that continuum of care and ensure that, you know, patients are taking their medications as prescribed, but also really connecting and having those conversations to see, you know, what are your goals of therapy? What would you like to accomplish so that we're ensuring that, you know, we're making this as seamless as possible to take your medications to achieve those health outcomes. Um, the other interesting fact is that most Canadians live within five kilometers of pharmacy. So again, it really speaks to that accessibility component and really being, um, you know, a great resource for a lot of Canadians coast to coast. Um, this slide always, you know, just makes me smile. I think uh, I'll kind of go into some of the stats, but you can see again, there's a number of us across the provinces, um, you know, have been trained for a number of years. So this is a degree um, that uh, we achieved four years of at least minimum university uh, to achieve the licensing. And what's really great about, you know, I think pharmacists, you may have seen them in different settings. So it's not just, you know, your retail community setting, but also in the hospital setting, Many are working within these interdisciplinary uh, primary care clinics as well. Um, some of them are working in manufacturing and in industry, government, associations. So really sort of across the, uh, the broad spectrum of the industry, um, you'll see a number of different pharmacists supporting um, health outcomes for, for patients and Canadians. And they really, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that traditional role of just dispensing has really expanded it and pharmacists across Canada continue to really deliver on a range of innovative services. So whether that's medication reviews, chronic disease management, so diabetes or hypertension, um, supporting with MS, there's immunization services, as well as wellness programs. And most of the provincial governments now have also recognized um, prescribing authorities for a lot of different pharmacists with varying scopes across the provinces. And we'll dig a little bit deeper into that as well and kind of share with you some of the different um, opportunities to tap into those services. And they really do complement in our uh, work in collaboration with your primary care physician, with your nurse practitioner um, to really support in facilitating access to medications, Maybe it might be ensuring that you have those convenient refills so that, you know, less time is sort of spent on, um, you know, chasing down medications or prescriptions. So really, you know, that pharmacist and that pharmacist team can really help to support and ensure that you have um, that easy access to, to those medications. I love this survey. So the Canadian Pharmacists Association a number of years ago put out a survey um, to really ask Canadians, you know, what did they think of their pharmacist um, just ahead of World Pharmacist Day? And, uh, it was interesting because, you know, I think it was really resounding in terms of just the, the recognition for some of the efforts um, that the profession has made in the, the impact uh, in the lives of Canadians. And, and this is certainly true that we've seen in the backdrop of the pandemic. 
you know, recognizing again that they were accessible, open, when sometimes other healthcare providers uh, were providing services either virtually or some offices were even closed. So allowing, you know, those pharmacists to be able to support with COVID immunization, um, I think that really recognize the, the important role that they play. And uh, certainly I think the public recognizes that. And it's great to see that, um, you know, a lot of Canadians do see pharmacists as a primary um, ally in the healthcare system. And that I think recognizing that they probably could do some more too, and, and hoping to see a bit more scope of practice extended to pharmacists to really close the gap in the healthcare system. Um, so you can see, you know, we'll get into some more details exactly, you know, how you can interact with your pharmacist. And many of you may do this today as well. And we'll review a few of the, the different scopes of practice as well, because um, this certainly has changed. And certainly there's been some new announcements, uh, even in the last uh, few months that we'll get into it. So really, when we look at the scope of practice, it does vary across provinces. But you'll see here at the top um, are different provinces and territories. And Governments have, have also taken note um, as they continue for ways to alleviate strain on the healthcare system and how can we better utilize um, the healthcare professionals um, that have been trained, have the expertise to really help to emerge as a really viable solution to the healthcare system and really address some of the system gaps. And we saw that uh, certainly during the pandemic where more uh, authority was given to pharmacists as well to really support patients. Um, so whether that was in just ensuring that patients had um, access to medications, maybe they ran out of refills. So, you know, pharmacists can help to refill those medications, even though you might have no more refills left, for example. Um, the other thing that we've also seen is that it wasn't just the pharmacist scope of plastics that expanded over the pandemic, but so has our technicians. And so the technicians that work with us in whether it's the hospital or again, a community pharmacy, they've also taken on a lot of additional roles and responsibilities on more of the technical checks. So, you know, helping to ensure again, that's the right medication, the right patient, the right uh, dosing. Um, they really helped us ensure that the technical aspects of that prescription is filled correctly and safely. And that really helps to free up the pharmacist time to interact more with patients so that, you know, they can get behind, get out from behind the counter and really engage with patients and um, complete some of those medication reviews, complete the immunizations, really help address some of their chronic medication management um, as well. So we've seen, again, this emergence um, even during uh, with prescribing of Paxlovid, which is a medication um, that is often used. Uh, so if you've been just recently diagnosed with COVID, it is a, a medication that can help to uh, relieve some of the symptoms a little bit earlier. So now pharmacists are able to, to support on that. Uh, we've also seen the emergence of pharmacist led walking clinics in certain provinces. So in Alberta, where pharmacists are able actually to prescribe, um, we've seen a lot of now clinics run strictly by pharmacists. So in, the, in that province specifically, uh, some pharmacists with special designation um, can actually prescribe medications. So things like medications for diabetes or blood pressure or thyroid medications, um, they have a special designation that again, really supports um, in providing access to care and really in that collaboration too with the primary care physician. So it's great to see some of these expanded scopes of practice here. Um, and we'll get into a little bit more detail around the minor ailments and exactly what that is. But I just wanted to showcase this slide because I think it really summarizes really nicely some of that scope of practice based on the province that you currently live in. Um, so in other places that you'll see across the board that pharmacists can make therapeutic substitutions or they can adjust a formulation. So let's say um, you're not tolerating your, your solid medication. So it's a, a tablet or a capsule, for example, and you're having difficulty swallowing it. Uh, if there's a commercially available liquid format, you can talk to your pharmacist and they can easily switch that formulation for you. So it's a lot more palatable. Um, they can also, as I mentioned, like extend your prescription. So let's say you run out of refills and you know you can't access the physician or the physician's office is closed 
a lot of times you can walk into your pharmacy again, depending on the province, um, and ask to have that prescription extended. So if you've been stable on that medication, um, there's been no underlying changes to your overall health or medical condition, that pharmacist can renew that prescription for you. And again, this is just to help ease that access to medication so that you're not having to delay or wait for refills or new prescriptions. The other piece is too is around immunization. So we've really seen too, um, from flu shots to the routine immunization and travel vaccines that your pharmacist can offer access to those vaccines and injections. Um, so this continues to expand actually. Um, so it's great to see that a lot of the publicly funded vaccines are ones that can be administered by your pharmacist. Um, so things like, you know, your flu shot, which many of you may have actually received from your pharmacist, same thing as your COVID, um, but more and more too, we're able to do like your pneumococcal, your shingles vaccines, um, all of these can be administered um, from by your pharmacist. The other piece too that um, is another great opportunity is, you know, in terms of travel. Uh, a lot of pharmacists have a passion for travel medicine. Um, some have different designations to support uh, to be able to really provide you with a comprehensive review and a travel consult. So this is another area where if you're leaving on a trip or a vacation, um, chat with your pharmacist because they can really support you in, you know, identifying which vaccines you might require, which prescription medications you might need, or any over-the-counter medications as well. Uh, and again, in certain provinces, they can actually prescribe um, some of those travel vaccines and not, you know, including the administration. So again, it just allows um, that easy access to, to those types of, of vaccines. So in terms of publicly funded, so these are again services that are free of charge to the patient. So when you walk in and um, I encourage all of you actually, if you haven't had a chance or um, to do a comprehensive medication review with your pharmacist, it's a great opportunity, you know, once a year, kind of sit down and really just kind of do a holistic review of the medications that you're on. Um, so that's not only just your prescription medications, but it could be your supplements, any herbals that you might be taking because the pharmacist is well positioned to be able to counsel you and provide recommendations on potential drug interactions, um, potential drug nutrient interactions. So sometimes certain supplements like calcium might interact with certain medications or the pharmacist may recommend that you um, take those at different times of the day to avoid any uh, decreased effectiveness of, of one medication. Um, so by going through these comprehensive medication reviews, um, they'll also, you know, chat about lifestyle and, you know, some patients might be interested in smoking cessation. So this is another uh, service that the pharmacist can certainly support. And uh, the other pieces too, is that they really take, again, that holistic approach and really want to hear what your treatment goals are. So we really work closely with you um, to try to ensure that, you know, if you say I'm taking a lot of medications, you know, I'm feeling that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking, sometimes we see seven, eight, nine medications that someone may take. So it's, it's, it's very overwhelming. So one of the things that your pharmacist can also do is look to see if we can streamline that and try to reduce that pill burden. So is there something that can be taken, you know, once a day versus twice a day? Sometimes there's combination therapies as well that can be used together. So, you know, there's two medications in one tablet. So that just helps to reduce again, sort of that pill burden. And that's something that um, your pharmacist can certainly support on and help you with, as well as, you know, chronic disease management um, and really support on the, on the symptom management side or, you know, helping to achieve your, your wellness goals. So highly encourage, you know, everyone to have that medication check with your pharmacist. Um, it's a great opportunity again, you know, once a year to review, go through it um, and, you know, look at ways that you can streamline certain um, therapies that you might be on or even speak to your pharmacist about potential side effects that you might be experiencing. Okay. 
So I just want to chat a little bit about minor ailment prescribing. You may have been hearing a little bit about this in the news. Um, recently, Ontario uh, in January recently caught up to many other provinces across Canada where um, the, the government has now allowed pharmacists to prescribe certain uh, types of medications for minor ailments. And this program was really uh, has started to really improve um, access to these healthcare services by, you know, expanding the role of the pharmacist, allowing them to prescribe where appropriate for these particular conditions. So in Ontario specifically, um, there's 13 different minor ailments that pharmacists can prescribe for. And you can see a few of them here on your screen. So um, there's everything from nasal allergies. So, you know, going into spring, a lot of patients suffer from seasonal allergies. Uh, well, there's things that the pharmacist can do to assess and see if there's maybe a prescription medication that might be a little bit more effective, or a little bit stronger to help you with those symptom relief. Uh, same thing with urinary tract infections. So this is another area um, that we actually have seen a lot of uptake in. So, you know, for anyone who has suffered from a urinary tract infection, you know your symptoms, and this is something you want to treat um, very quickly and don't necessarily want to wait. So you can walk into your local pharmacy and that pharmacist will assess to make sure again it's you're eligible and you're appropriate to to receive a prescription medication but essentially you know you could leave um, that day with your with your antibiotic and start treatment right away so it's really helping to relieve those symptoms and ensure that there's you know quicker access to to, to medications um, the other piece too that's really exciting is that BC just announced um, on June 1st, so just last week, that uh, the pharmacists in that province are also authorized to prescribe 21 minor ailments, as well as contraceptive contraception needs uh, for BC residents. And so, again, depending on the province, the number of minor ailments might be a little bit different. But essentially, when we're talking about minor ailments, it's really you know, any health condition that can be managed with minimal treatment um, or self-care strategies, they typically tend to be short-term. Lab results might not be required. Um, there's sort of low risk of treat what we call like treatment masking underlying conditions. So again, they're usually self-limiting, um, short duration. So these are the types of ailments that you see you know, so and again, anything from supporting any like dermatology or dermatitis to hemorrhoids to cold sores to acne. And again, depending on the province, um, these minor ailments prescribing uh, might change a little bit. To, you know, might be a slightly different, but essentially, it's really to help provide that quick relief to patients for these um, conditions that uh, are sort of short term and self limiting. In many of the pharmacies too, uh, you don't need an appointment. You can walk in and see that pharmacist, um, and essentially, you know, within a few minutes, um, they can again complete that assessment, ask a series of questions. Uh, I should also say they also look out for any red flags. So if there is anything that you know through the questioning or through you sharing your symptoms with that pharmacist that seems outside of the scope of the minor ailment they will absolutely refer you to uh, your physician as well. The other piece that's really important of this program in this um, is really ensuring that continuity of care. So the other requirement um, that pharmacists um, must follow is that they need to follow your primary care. So you need to notify the primary care provider that you completed you know, this assessment for, let's say, your tract infection and what was the outcome and what prescription you may have prescribed for that patient so that the physician is aware um, and there's just that continuity of care. So this is really exciting. Um, I think this has really been sort of a game changer too for a lot of patients and I often hear, especially for our rural communities where um, primary care physicians may not be as easily accessible that this has certainly been um, a welcomed uh, program uh, for, for patients. So I think we're going to continue to see some additional minor ailments added to this list. Um, but for now, uh, really exciting. And again, with uh, BC just recently announced uh, June 1st that they can do the, 
the prescribing for those 21 minor ailments, as well as the contraception. And BC actually just recently also covered any contraceptive needs for BC residents. So that's everything from the pill to the IUD um, to, the, to the morning after pill as well. Um, so this slide just talks a little bit about the full scopes of practice. So we sort of touched on, you know, the medication reviews. We talked about uh, pharmacist prescribing and some of the other components that I just wanted to touch on, too, is sort of the point of care testing. So this one is offered, um, again, depending on the pharmacy, but a lot of pharmacies will offer a point of care testing. And what I mean by that is it's actually a device that can measure um, certain lab values. So, for example, A1C. So if you're uh, diabetic, your A1C is your, your blood sugar over a three month period. So this is a good measure of how well controlled your blood sugars are. So these are the types of uh, point of care testing that might be available in your pharmacy. So we talked about A1C, there's also mm -hmm. cholesterol testing um, that you can also get from point of care <laughs> testing as well as um, there's also sometimes like your strep throat. So these are services that are offered at your local pharmacy. Um, on top of, of course, your vaccinations. And a lot of times you don't need uh, to book an appointment. This can be uh, a walk-in. The other piece too, in, in certain pharmacies that do offer is, is virtual. So there is that component we've heard from, you know, patients, just the, the convenience piece of having to, you know, just talk to your pharmacist from the comforts of your own home. So there are, again, some pharmacists that will complete some virtual consults over the phone with you so that you have that, uh, you can have that private conversation, you know, one on one with your pharmacist. It's a secured video or phone um, conferencing. And again, really allows for those, you know, um, allows you to have that intimate conversation with with patients. Um, I just want to touch a little bit on medication adherence tools, too, because um, this is another component that you know, you can really talk to your pharmacist about as well. Many pharmacies will offer these different types of compliance tools that really helps to ensure that you're taking your medication on a regular basis. Um, just recently, I saw, you know, with the World Health Organization, um, they had looked at adherence and right now adherence to long term therapy only averages about 50%. So a lot of you know patients don't necessarily take the medication as prescribed by the physician. And there's a multitude of reasons for that. Um, but certainly if you're finding that you have a lot of medications, it's difficult to kind of keep track of when you should be taking it. These different types of compliance tools are really great. So some of you may already have like blister cards and there's different formats. There's the blister cards, there's sometimes in strip packaging, but at the end of the day, um, they're all there to really help to support um, ensuring that you're taking your medication um, as directed and at the time is indicated as well. There's also other tools that are available uh, through pharmacies sometimes too, so an auto refill. So what this does is it really takes the guesswork out of when your next refill is due. It automatically refills it upon your consent um, that, you know, in three months time, for example, that medication will be ready. And oftentimes the pharmacist will either call or send you a text to let you know that it's available. Um, we also have, this is specific to Rexel specifically, but we do have other um, through a, like a loyalty app that patients can also um, connect with their pharmacy, have access to their medication profiles, send in their um, prescription, take a photo of their prescription and send that to the pharmacy so that they can start to process that right away. So many pharmacies as well have, you know, similar types of reminders or tools to really ensure that you can access your profile. So whether that's, you know, through an app um, or through, again, their, the medication printouts that you get, um, those are really important to have. And especially as you go to different uh, service providers to really have a list of all your medications and you're sharing that with the different healthcare professionals that you might be interacting with. Just wanted to share this slide because I think it's a great one in terms of really uh, making sure that we're advocating. So each of us, I think, play an important role in advocating for our own health. And I'm a true believer that it's really important to, you know, empower um, you with the knowledge and especially as it pertains to medication. So 
This slide just outlines some, some key questions to ask your healthcare professional. So whether that's, again, your nurse practitioner, it might be your physician, um, or you're transferring to another healthcare professional, just really ensuring that you're, you're an active partner in your health or, you know, you've got someone who's advocating for you. So when it comes to medication, really important to understand, you know, if there's changes, an increase or decrease in dose, or maybe something is being discontinued, really understanding, you know, why is that happening? Um, and really, you know, making sure that that healthcare professional is, is explaining to you why that dose is changing. Question also, you know, do I need to continue to use this medication? Oftentimes I've seen, um, you know, patients might be on a medication long term and the reason for the initial um, underlying reason for them initially being on it is no longer there. It's been treated, uh, but sometimes these things continue. So really, you know, questioning, do I need to continue to be on this medication long term? How should I be taking it? And again, you know, is there an appropriate time of the day? Is there any drug interactions? Um, or is there anything I need to monitor with this? So certain medication, prescription medications do require uh, maybe some lab follow up. So certain medications may increase or decrease your potassium levels. So the physician or pharmacist will recommend, you know, some, some lab follow up just to make sure everything is within normal range. And then just important again, just to, you know, when you're sharing information about medications um, with these healthcare providers, also think about any herbal medications you might be on, any supplements, any vitamins, because there are some interactions with those. And we probably could have a whole other top topic on uh, some of those drug, drug interactions, drug nutrient interactions, but really important to share, you know, what vitamins you might be taking, what herbals, and especially you know, if there's any ginkgo biloba or if there's any uh, St. John's wort, like some of those medications um, can absolutely interact with uh, your prescription medications as well. Um, so just in summary too, I think when I think about, you know, where we can play a role too, certainly with MS, um, a really big component is around that symptom management. So really talk to your pharmacist as well about some of those symptoms that you might be experiencing. So whether it's the fatigue, whether it's, you know, the sadness, the depression, sometimes it's the pain and the pain management is a big one too. Um, bladder or urinary dysfunction. So there's a lot of things that your pharmacist can do there to really help to support that healthy lifestyle, help to reduce um, or help to manage some of those symptoms and, you know, hopefully manage those side effects too um, and provide you with some good counseling and recommendations around that. The other piece is really around compliance. So if you're finding it really overwhelming or there's, you know, you're taking a lot of different medications, talk to your pharmacist about how you can a streamline it. Is there anything that you can do to, um, you know, make that a little bit more easier for you and reduce that pill burden? Um, schedule a one-on-one -on -one medication review with your pharmacist and really go through everything. Uh, you can talk to them about compliance packaging as well and how to really organize your medication so it's much easier to remember to take them. And with those compliance packages, it's really nice too because a lot of them are discrete and you can, you know, usually just tear off that section that you need for that day, put it into your bag, put it into your purse and, and uh, continue on your day. Uh, so the drug interactions we talked about, I think we talked about also, you know, the drug nutrient interactions that can sometimes happen. And the other piece too, I just wanted to highlight here is that pharmacies can also help with safe disposal of any unused or expired medications. So if there's, you know, you need to do a cabinet cleanup uh, of your medications, it's probably good practice, you know, once a year, just kind of go through your medication cabinet, see if you have anything expired. Um, you can actually return those to your local pharmacy and they'll dispose of them safely for you. There's certain pharmacies that also participate in the Sharps uh, disposal. So there's only participating pharmacies on that. So I just included the link there if you wanted to check out uh, which pharmacies can support, give you Sharps, but also um, as part of that Sharp return um, program. And lastly, um, you know, pharmacists, not just necessarily all about medication, but also really those non-pharmacological options. So there's a lot of things that they can support with that are not necessarily related to getting a prescription medication or over-the-counter medication, but really giving you some like tips on healthy sleep habits, 
could be around, um, again, you know, some nutrition or ensuring some pain management strategies as well. And um, so they can really help to support both on the, you know, medication side, but certainly can support with uh, the non-pharmacological interventions as well. Um, and just to, you know, highlight that there's also pharmacies that are, they, they specialize in the specialty medication arena. And, you know, one of the things that we recognize certainly with um, medications that require that might be a bit more complex or that are, you know, tend to be a little bit more expensive, that piece around reimbursement is really key. So how do I get access to this expensive medication? How am I going to pay for it? You know, what programs are there to support me? A lot of pharmacies can help to support that. And specifically, um, I just highlighted here through, through Rexel, we have a specialty support program that really helps our patients navigate through that because we recognize too that it, it can be confusing, it can be complex. Um, so again, you know, connect with your pharmacist and see how they can support you and navigate through, you know, some of these other medications that are again, a little bit more expensive. Sometimes they're not so easy to procure. So really chat to speak to them about, you know, what that looks like. Um, but they can, you know, support not only providing clinical information, but ensuring that uh, from a reimbursement or any other patient support programs that might exist for these more complex medications that they're there to support, as well as ensuring um, proper cold chain, because we know sometimes with these specialty medications, they certainly require, you know, proper storage, cold chain, um, and especially, you know, during that delivery um, directly to your home as well. So I will pause there. I want to make sure I do open it up. You know, if there is any questions um, that we do leave some time, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Really want to thank you for this opportunity and uh, I'll turn it back over to Sue. Thank you, Heidi, for your informative presentation. I have to say, I have quite a lot of notes scribbled down on a piece of paper beside me. Um, we have a few minutes left for questions. Again, please type yours into the chat box and we'll get to as many as possible. Um, I do have one here. Um, Heidi, the question is, I'm not sure how to have a pharmacist. I only have the one for my treatment. I went to the pharmacist for my COVID vaccine, but it's not like the family doctor. Should we approach them and tell them if they uh, can be, and ask them if they can be our pharmacist? I guess someone's just asking how that goes. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think if you have, you know, a pharmacist within your local community, um, absolutely mm -hmm. connect with them, see how they can support you through your journey. And, you know, whether that's with, you know, your specialty medication, but it's also, you know, a lot of other things too that come up when we talked about the symptom management component. So it's really important to have, you know, that individual that can also support um, in collaboration, of course, with your prescriber and your, uh, and your specialist, but they can really, you know, look holistically at all the medications that you're taking and, and really support on the symptom management side. So that's where I see they can really play a role you know, again, whether it's pain management, sleep dysfunction, um, you know, they can really kind of navigate through some of that and, and provide some really good recommendations, both from, you know, a pharmacological perspective, but also, you know, what are some of the healthy lifestyle uh, recommendations too that they can share with you. So yes, highly encourage you to, you know, connect and get to know that, that local pharmacist. Okay, I, there's another one that I see. Um, it says, I have so much respect for our pharmacists and I'm aware that each province can have different services. Are there any out of pocket fees to use the services or do the province's medical public health coverages come into play? Yeah, that's a great question. So for the majority, so are the ones that I shared, um, so a lot of the medication reviews, a lot of the immunizations, um, a lot of those are covered. Now, there are some that there might be um, some pharmacies may have like a charge for like a, a, a vaccine that you could get from your physician. Um, sometimes there is a, an administrative fee that some pharmacies will, will charge. But mostly speaking, a lot of these services are, are publicly funded and there is no out of pocket expense, typically speaking. Again, it does vary a little bit depending on pharmacy and province. 
But generally speaking, um, for the publicly funded services, you know, like a Medicaid, so if I were to take the example, you know, medication review in Ontario, no, there's definitely no charge um, for that. And same thing, you know, medication review in Alberta. And a lot of these are, are not services that are uh, out of pocket expense. The only time there might be is for an administration of uh, immunization or vaccine in certain cases, not all. Um, okay, we have another question. Um, this is a good one. When you do a medication review with questions and concerns, does the pharmacist need to report that back to your doctor? And this is a question coming from Ontario. Yeah, thank you for that question. So absolutely. Um, so when we sit down and go through that comprehensive medication review, and let's say we have a recommendation on, you know, increasing or decreasing a dose, or maybe it's stopping a medication, um, all of those recommendations absolutely go to the prescriber. And then the prescriber will then say, yes, you know, I agree with that. And they'll send a new prescription then for, you know, that new dose. Um, so absolutely, we work very closely with the primary care physician um, to, to get those changes. So if we see that, you know, there might be a drug-drug interaction, we inform the physician. And then, you know, we, we wait for that physician to, to, you know, if there is a change in therapy and a new prescription is required, then, um, you know, at that point, we'll... we'll um, We'll dispense and cancel on that new prescription. Yeah, great question. Um, oh, okay. We do have some some other questions in the curated section. I take several pills in the morning. Are there different sizes of the bubble pack dispensing cards? They are actually depending on the brand of the the card, the blister card, typically, again, depending on, you're right, like the size of the tablet or the size of the pill, like sometimes you can fit four or five different ones in there. Sometimes you can only fit, you know, three, depending again on the size. But yes, um, essentially there could be some different sizes depending again on the brand of the blister card. Most of them are pretty similar, um, but it, it, yeah, depend the number of tablets that you can put in the blister card might vary again, depending on the medications that you're taking but there might be different options. So if you're finding that, um, you know, you can't fit them all into to one, yeah, chat with your pharmacist about, you know, some alternatives. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question is, my neurologist will prescribe a disease modifying MS drug, but has asked me to decide which injectable I might want to try first. Can a pharmacist help pharmacist help make that decision decision if I'm not yet connected with an MS clinic? Absolutely. I think, I think what they can do is certainly, you know, go through the different options. Um, it's not the first time I hear this as well, where, you know, you might have two or three different medication or DMARD options for you. So they can help to maybe, you know, go through how it's administered, you know, the dosage, you know, what is that going to look like in terms of how many times a day or per week that we need to take it? Um, they can talk a little bit about the side effects. They can talk about the monitoring that's involved. So that might just help to crystallize and help make that decision. It's going to be certainly a conversation that happens in collaboration with the patient and with you um, to really understand, you know, what is it that you're looking for to in a medication or your outcomes. So, you know, some are fine, you know, taking uh, you know, multiple times a day, others not so much. So really sort of understanding the goals of therapy and working really closely with the patient to determine, yeah, what is the best option for you? So in short, um, yes, have that conversation. They can really walk you through, you know, the pros and cons or the indications and the side effects for each as well. Okay. Um, just let me check and see if we have any others. No, it Looks like we looks like we don't have any more questions at this point. Um, I had a question, Heidi. Um, I'm just wondering what Schedule One drugs are. Mm, prescription medications. Thank you for that. Yeah, you probably saw okay. that in the um, in the chart, the scope of practice. Mm -hmm. So that one was checked yeah. off under Alberta. So a Schedule One drug is okay. essentially any medication that requires a, a prescription. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it would seem that we've come to the end of our questions. Um, again, thank you, Heidi, for your presentation. It was marvelous. Um, 
As we wrap up today's broadcast, we want to remind you about the MS Knowledge Network. Um, I think there's a slide about that. Um, uh, which is, it's staffed by trained navigators who provide consistent quality information and support. You can connect by phone, email, or live chat through the MS Society's website and know that the interactions are confidential and the information is trustworthy. Navigators can help you learn more about the programming and resources we offer. Plus, they can help you find other community or government supports and programs and can also get you signed up for the monthly MS Canada e-newsletter. We want you to be a part of the MS community and encourage you to get involved with our programs, services, events, government relations, and volunteer opportunities. These days, connecting with each other is much more important than ever, and more information is available on our website at www.mscanada.ca. If you have any questions or need support for this webinar or any of our education activities, you can reach out to the education team by email to education at mscanada.ca. Once again, Heidi, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, clearly, um, the job of a pharmacist is just such um, a broad um, job and it encompasses so many factors and just clearly you're you know a large partner in our our health care um, our individual health care and um, thank you for all that information today that was wonderful um, yeah um, so on behalf of N ms canada Thank you for tuning in for today's webinar and have a great rest of your evening or your afternoon, depending what part of the country you're from and goodbye. We'll see you another time. Thank you.